Hello, this is Anime Addiction, and welcome to another episode of Let's Analyze Death Battle. Today's battle will feature Terminator vs. Robocop, two of science fiction's most iconic figures, and two of my very personal favorites in science fiction as well. As always, uh, if you have not seen this episode yet, please go to ScrewAttack.com or to their channel on YouTube in order to see it so you don't get spoiled. And as always, I will be letting the stars of Death Battle, Boomstick and Wiz, make the initial introductions for both characters and their pre-battle analysis. So, Boomstick and Wiz, go to it, you crazy guys! Sci-fi movies have taught me two very important things. One, I want my own lightsaber, and two, the future blows. It's unavoidable. The warrior of the next millennium is the machine, such as the Terminator, the time-traveling metal assassin. And Robocop, Detroit cyborg defender. These mechanized combatants have fought before, but never in a no-holds-barred one-on-one duel to the death. Or without brand restrictions. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. In the distant future of 2004, the government deployed the world's first automated defense network, Skynet, to keep everybody on the planet safe and happy. So Skynet used the planet's nuclear arsenal to annihilate most of humanity and take over the world. The age of machines had begun. To combat the remaining human resistance, Skynet developed a specialized breed of robotic soldier. Affectionately called the Terminator. Standing 6 feet 2 inches and weighing almost 400 pounds, the T-850 Terminator is a cybernetic organism, living tissue surrounding a hyperalloy endoskeleton. This made the perfect disguise, capable of infiltrating enemy ranks with its human visage. Basically the whole point of the Terminator was to blend in with normal people and then kill them. Yes. Because two-time powerlifting champion Arnold Schwarzenegger is totally your average guy. Sure, but only the Model 101 class looked like that. The Terminator has hundreds of different possible faces. What was that one designed for? Attracting women and making men feel inadequate? Damn! Using time displacement equipment, the Terminator was sent back in time to stop Skynet's greatest rival, John Connor, leader of the Human Resistance. This model was first sent to super early abort John Connor, then protect John Connor, then protect John Connor again, and then blow up this bitch. You are terminated. The T-850 is powered by twin hydrogen fuel cells. A single cell can last up to 120 years, but extensive damage may rupture the cell to critical condition. And it blows up like a small hydrogen bomb. Similar to the explosion that brought down the Hindenburg. Luckily for Arnie, he can ditch a damaged cell before that happens. And he works just fine with only one left. Like Lance Armstrong without the steroids. The Terminator is programmed with an abundance of subroutine data, including Skynet's extensive logs on all combat and weaponry throughout Earth's history. This even includes data on all previous T-800 models. Through this, he technically has more experience and skill than any human being could ever possibly achieve. But while he's a master in all weaponry, he does have his favorites. In the future, the Terminator wields an M27 phased plasma rifle, which is too heavy and powerful for any ordinary person to use. When the time period doesn't have any space guns lying around, his weapons of choice include a hardballer long slide pistol, a 12 gauge Franke shotgun, a portable M79 grenade launcher, and the beautiful M134 minigun. Oh man, just looking at it makes me feel wonderful pants feelings. Speaking of feelings, the Terminator is a learning machine, adapting to human behavior through observation and interaction. It can even learn to feel genuinely sad, which is odd since Skynet designed it to be a merciless mass murderer. Jesus, you're gonna kill that guy! Of course, I'm a Terminator. Just put up your hand and say, I swear I won't kill anyone. I swear I will not kill anyone. He'll <laughs> live. Sad or not, the Terminator is a beast in combat. 
He's even taken down superior models like the next-gen T900s, the nearly invincible T1000, and even the TX, which is actually an anti-Terminator. The Terminator is a master marksman with advanced analysis, calculative, and observational tools. He can survive massive blows, power shortages, and getting dragged through an entire city. Plus, after the last T-800 was melted in a steel mill, Skynet upgraded his titanium endoskeleton to Colton, which can withstand extreme temperatures over 3,000 degrees Celsius. Why even bother making new Terminators? The T-850 is clearly the best. Hasta la vista, baby. Each Terminator is not unique, made by assembly for quick deployment. To save time, Skynet forgoes high-end software protection, leaving the Terminator easily hackable. In fact, the one T-850 who protected Connor on Judgment Day was reprogrammed not once, but four separate times. Just screams lazy, lazy design. Fuck you, asshole. But it's a little hard to hack something that can kill you with one hand in 20 million different ways. The Terminator is one of the deadliest assassins in movie history. If you get in his way, don't bother running. You're already dead. I'll be back. Alex J. Murphy was a good police officer with a good family. As with many good cops, that all changed when he was transferred to Detroit, Michigan. What began as a routine patrol through the city became the most important moment of Murphy's life, his death. Holy shit! Damn, that guy can eat more bullets than 50 cents! Murphy would have been six feet under if the megacorporation Omni Consumer Products had not stepped in. By privatizing Detroit's police force, OCP technically owned Murphy's corpse. That doesn't seem legal at all. With unchecked crime on the rise, OCP's uh, forward-thinking executive Bob Morton proposed a bailout plan so ridiculously absurd, it just might work. They would rebuild Murphy. Better, stronger, with less flexibility, which of course means robo parts. The result was one bad motherfucker, Robocop. What are your prime directives? Serve the public trust, protect the innocent, uphold the law. <laughs> With the durability of a tank and the firepower of a one-man army, Robocop nearly annihilated all of Detroit's street crime in just a couple of days. The man was unstoppable. But was he man or machine? This guy is really good. He's not a guy, he's a machine. Robocop is 99% artificial, but he relies on the most complicated known machinery, a human brain. Even after OCP tried to make him their own personal Robopet, the man called Murphy still lived. With no family, a contorted public image, and the constant threat of deactivation by his corporate owners, the struggle to regain his humanity would consume Murphy's every waking moment, while also fighting crime. And that's just his good days. Fortunately, his cutting-edge arsenal makes locking up the bad guys the easiest part. Housed in his nifty right leg is the custom Auto 9 machine pistol, one of the most powerful hand cannons ever made. In his left leg, he's got several tactical ordnance grenades, each with adjustable power levels. At level 3, a single ordnance can annihilate a metal security door, so just imagine what maximum level 10 can do. If he needs a bit more firepower, Murphy has an attachable weapon arm, complete with machine gun, flamethrower, and anti-tank smart bomb missile. And for those extra special moments, there's the Cobra Assault Cannon, which goes boom, and then there's no more anything. <laughs> He also has a subsonic jetpack, which helps him jump sharks. I... I don't even... Where's your sense of humor? Right here. Jesus Christ. Murphy is also equipped with state-of-the-art hardware and software, including a thermograph, a video recorder, and a terminal strip for collecting data. Poor for ripping out throats! Just look at that thing! No wonder Detroit's falling apart. All their USB flash drives can double as shivs. 
Murphy's armor is made up of carboceramic reinforced titanium with laminated Kevlar, which basically means it'll stop pretty much anything. It's like the Pepperidge Farm bread packaging of armor. I'm composed of titanium. I don't believe you are. Your move. Each leg has two ram bolts, which can anchor him into the ground to stop fleeing motorboats and speeding cars. He also has a targeting system so precise he can catch and even shoot bullets out of thin air. Expert marksman? More like master of the impossible. Don't try to follow me! We won't. The baby's going with me! No. I'll kill it, man! I'll do it! I'll fucking kill it! We can't have that. Murphy has defeated plenty of technically superior combat machines and endured dozens of seemingly fatal situations. He's strong enough to lift a 10-ton armored door, tough enough to survive a bazooka, brave enough to plunge into a giant nuclear plant monster thing and kill it from inside. Note to self, remember to weed garden. And if that's not crazy enough for you, he's even rescued Sting from the four horsemen in WCW wrestling. Yes, this is real. Murphy may be a walking tank, but he also moves like one. He's so slow! His main function is to chase the bad guys. You'd think OCP would have prioritized running legs over, say, his frisbee skills. Also, Murphy's battery can only last about 24 hours without recharging, but consistent damage can quickly drain his power. In prolonged combat with someone his equal, Murphy is in constant danger of power failure. To top it off, his human parts add extra vulnerability. Which is stupid because it means he can even get a common cold and... <laughs> fucking sneeze lightning bolts out of his face! It doesn't matter how many flaws he's got. Robocop is a badass! Nice shooting, son. What's your name? Murphy. All right, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. It's time for a Robo Death Battle! As always, Wiz and Boomstick were quite detailed in their introductions and pre-battle analysis for both combatants, and I, for one, am most impressed at the amount of firepower that they're going to bring to this death battle. Now, as for what I think would be... Uh, important to note for each combatant, let's first start with Arnold Schwarzenegger's alter ego, the Terminator. Its name says it all, the Terminator. In other words, its main goal is to kill, to wipe out its target, and to be absolutely relentless in its goal. That's its purpose. <clears throat> and therefore, that makes the Terminator a very formidable adversary. As if we've seen throughout the movies and comics, <clears throat> virtually nothing will ever make the Terminator deviate from its goal, aside from that obvious weakness that was exploited in the movies and also um, <clears throat> detailed in the pre band analysis. That's, the Terminator is easily hackable and can be reprogrammed. However, other than that, the Terminator has very few exploitable weaknesses that Robocop could use against him. For one thing, even though its human vis uh, disguise allows it to blend in with the other people so that it could sneak in and destroy its target, it does not give the Terminator any added protection, relatively speaking, against Robocop's armor. Another thing to note is that the Terminator normally does not carry any weapons with it. It can only use whatever weapons it finds on the spot. And therefore, if it does not have any weapons at hand, then it will simply be limited to its own physical ability. And even though the physical abilities are quite formidable on their own, I mean, he could 
probably crush a person's windpipe in seconds with his hand, that does limit the Terminator to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat, and that could also play against him. Lastly, the Terminator, though it has been uh, shown to be nearly unstoppable, it is not undefeatable, and considering that Skynet has been using these to eliminate humans uh, one by one and things of that nature, and the humans are still going, means that the Terminator can be defeated. It's just a matter of how to defeat it and what means in order to defeat it. And against Robocop, the Terminator just might be able to tank whatever Robocop throws at him and considering that it has far less weaknesses, uh, especially with no uh, human re uh, weaknesses such as uh, Robocop's brain and whatever organics he has left, the Terminator may just be able to come out on top of this case here. Now then, let's switch over to his opponent, Robocop. Now, Robocop was built to be the ultimate in law enforcement, and he certainly carries enough military-grade hardware in order to do the job. He's also built more or less like a walking tank, and even though he is said to be quite slow, with the firepower that he's packing and all the equipment that he has, sometimes just being as slow as a bulldozer is all that he needs to be in order to stop the criminals. Now, as for his weaknesses, well, we can't overlook the fact that a small part of him, only 1% of him, still is organic and therefore is susceptible to all harm that all organic beings have. And, furthermore, they also mentioned that he only has enough power for 24 hours before recharging, and a prolonged battle will drain it even faster. And that might, that can work against Robocop. However, in Robocop's favor, he carries more weapons on him, such as the Auto 9 pistol, the tactical ordinances, and even that um, data strip can be used as a ship. And it also stands the question of whether or not he can use that data strip in order to hack into the Terminator. Because they did mention that the Terminator is easily hackable. So what's to stop Robocop from using that data strip to break into Robocop, I mean, uh, break into Terminator's CPU and reprogram it? That's an idea that I was thinking about myself, but in any case here, Robocop has going for him his armor, more armor plating, and far more weapons that he has on hand versus the Terminator who needs to find and carry his own weapons on the spot. Now, <clears throat> in Against Robocop, we, as I said, there was his slow speed, his human parts, and also his uh, power uh, limitations. Now, as to whether or not he has what it takes to defeat the Terminator, that is still up to question. And as such, I would have to wait and see with the death battle before making a final decision. Now, as I've always been saying, I try to be as objective as I can in these analysis, and I try not to be biased uh, or let any personal feelings interfere with my judgment. And in this case here, I like both characters so much that I really can't pick a winner out of this um, matchup because they both have good points and they both have bad points that either one of them could exploit. Now, as for the battle itself, I think there's going to be a whole lot of collateral damage and I think that in the end it's going to come down to which combatant has the enough drive to win. 
and if it's a question between programming or human em or human uh, emotion or drop or determination I only have to say that Robocop would have only a slight edge on this but only a slight one I'm not saying that he's going to win he only has a slight edge due to that one unforeseeable factor which is the human factor and that might just might put him over the top but that's only a philosophical outlook and I think it would be best that we see the death battle by itself and see just who is the best robo combatant out there so whiz and boomstick let's get started Holy shit! Hey, where'd you come from? How'd you do that? Give me your guns and your clothes. Now! Whoa, hey buddy, that's not really my thing. Hey, w w w what are you doing? Don't touch that! Freeze, creep. You are under arrest. Come quietly, or there will be... Trouble. Negative. Walk away if you want to live. You are coming with me. Alive... or dead. Fight! Hasta la vista, baby. Good news, scum. You are no longer under arrest. Do you plan on hiding forever? No. No. Time to bring you down to Earth.
Dormammu. Property damage. Resisting arrest. Assaulting an officer. Murder. Your hot streak ends here. Fuck you, big one. You have the right to remain silent. I suggest you exercise it. Nine shots, you're out. Check me. What are you doing? This fight is over. Not yet. Hydrogen fuel cells ruptured. You are terminated. From that one. Terminator may have held the speed advantage, but Robocop trumped everything else. His arsenal certainly had more destructive force behind it. You'd think the Terminator's space rifle would be enough, but Robocop has tanked plasma shots before. In fact, the difference in survivability is very clear cut. Robocop fell from the top of a skyscraper onto a gas main, which then exploded, and he was fine. The Terminator was blown up by a homemade pipe bomb. Robocop pushed a building-busting bomb into a warehouse, that solid brick by the way, which detonated in his face, and he was fine. The Terminator was obliterated by the same kind of explosion. Robocop stopped and reversed a 3,000 psi hydraulic press with his bare hands. You, you gotta see where this is going now, right? And being part human means Murphy can think more creatively, adding a level of unpredictability the Terminator could not immediately understand. The Terminator almost had a victory, until it blew up in his face. The winner is Robocop. Now that was an awesome death battle, and I have to say, there were times in which I thought Robocop was about to lose to the Terminator, but in the end, it was that human factor which saved his, li his life and was able to pull out a win against the Terminator. And I, for one, am glad about that part, even though I said that the Terminator was quite a tenacious foe, and he certainly put up one heck of a fight and almost won it in the end by blowing himself up, but hey, <laughs> a win's a win, and that's how it looked. Now, I know there are some arguments against this fight, so let's get started with them, okay? Now, the first argument was that the Terminator was supposed to have the knowledge of all the weapons and tactics of Earth's history, and that should have also included the weapons and tactics of Robocops. Now, that by itself would be a good argument and disavow the victory of Robocop over the Terminator, except for one minor detail. You do remember the first rule of death battle, right? It's that death battle rules clearly state that the combatants will have no prior knowledge of each other during the before the fight. 
and that means that Terminator would not have an idea of what kind of weapons and tactics that Robocop would use. And you're wondering, well, how is that possible? The answer to this is pretty simple enough. You have to think of it in terms of parallel worlds. Whenever there's a death battle and they put two characters from different series together, you can think of each series as a different universe. There's the universe for Robocop, in which OCP came about and then came the events of New Detroit and whatnot. And then there's the Terminator's universe, in which case uh, Skynet was created in the year 2004, and therefore, in on Terminator's world, Robocop did not exist, and on Robocop's world, Terminator didn't exist. So, Terminator, for some reason, uh, transported himself back in time, but ended up on Robocop's world, and therefore, he naturally wouldn't have any knowledge of Robocop, since he does not exist on Terminator's world. And the same thing goes for any other death battle that happens. Whenever you take two characters, each from different series or franchises or whatnot, you just think of it in terms of alternate or parallel worlds. And therefore, that way, they can follow the rule of no prior knowledge of each other. Now, another argument is that Robocop's mouth is exposed below his visor, and therefore, the Terminator should have went for that obvious target. Well, the fact of the matter is, in some of the scenes of the death battle, he did hit go for that face, but it didn't really do much of a, any damage or difference in the battle, and here's the reason why. When you look at the uh, face, when Robocop has his visor removed, you'll notice that his face is actually just a front covering of a metal skull which is encasing his human brain. So in other words, it's not really a face, it's just simply something, uh, just a human Vis visage stretched over a metal skull. And if you've ever watched Tur uh, Robocop 2 from the original series, he Robocop said it himself, and he says they just made this face to honor uh, Mrs. Murphy's dead husband. Of course, that was pretty much of a lie, but that's pretty much how it is. So, going for the face here really wouldn't do much damage to Robocop. Now, if you go beyond the metal skull and into the human brain, then you would have damaged it. But of course, since the brain is a, part, a very important part of Robocop, it's probably very heavily protected in order to keep it from getting damaged. Now, the biggest argument of all against this death battle is the fact that Robocop was able to defeat the Terminator because of his human creativity and determination. Now it has been said that the Terminator can also think and feel just like a human, so that shouldn't have been a factor. Well, my answer to that is, yes, that is true. It was even stated in the pre-battle analysis. Speaking of feelings, the Terminator is a learning machine, adapting to human behavior through observation and interaction. It can even learn to feel genuinely sad, which is odd since Skynet designed it to be a merciless mass murderer. And that is the main point of the debate. The, termi the Terminator is a learning machine. Yes, it can learn to think creatively. Yes, it can learn emotions. Yes, it can learn to um, anticipate human behavior. But the first thing is, it has to learn it first. We cannot assume that the Terminator will already have these things when it is thrown into battle. Because in every movie, it is always a new Terminator. 
and therefore it may have been programmed with the either the objective to kill John Connor or protect John Connor or whatnot, but it still only has to start off with its programming first, and then whatever it picks up and learns comes later. And in the running battle against Robocop, it only had its programming first. And therefore, when it came up against Robocop's ingenuity, uh, it was at a loss and couldn't adapt fast enough. You, you gotta see where this is going now, right? And being part human means Murphy can think more creatively, adding a level of unpredictability the Terminator could not immediately understand. That's right. A level of unpredictability that the Terminator could not immediately understand. And Robocop took that advantage and got the win. In any case here, this was a very fun death battle and I enjoyed looking over the main points and in the end I also agree that the death battle analysis proves that Robocop had what it took to win this particular battle. And I hope that ScrewAttack.com and uh, the death battle team will continue to keep on churning out more and more wonderful death battles and for me to analyze and for all of us to enjoy. And until then, I hope everyone will take care and I'll see you later.